I'm here with Transportation Secretary Elaine Chow. Secretary Chow, so nice to see you. Nice to see you. So um, you just issued a report yeah. on autonomous vehicles, some guidelines. Can you talk to us about what that entails? You know, autonomous vehicles are changing so rapidly. The technology is changing every year, if not faster. So we want to make sure that the federal government, which is going to be a major uh, regulator of this new technology, would at least have some harmonized guidelines as to how to approach this new technology. So there are like 38 different federal agencies throughout the government, and they had their own way, their own language on how to talk about all of this. So in conjunction with the White House, I announced um, a report that we did at CES, and um, it basically puts forward certain principles and very top line, they are, we want to talk about safety and security. We want to ensure that innovation is not hampered. And also that whatever guidelines and policies that come from the federal government, that they are consistent. So that there's consistent policy emanating from all these different um, you know, government entities. And I think that's really important because the government's role is to create the environment through which innovation can flourish. And that's what this AV 4.0, um, maintaining America's leadership in autonomous vehicles is all about. Really starting to see this coming on yeah. stream. And a similar technology or a similar uh, issue for you in terms of transportation that's also coming this year perhaps is commercial space travel. Very exciting. And you've got Virgin Galactic, yeah. SpaceX, Blue Origin, all ready to go. Are they working with you and your um, offices to make that happen? Of course, because uh, you know they have to get licenses to be able to launch their rockets. And six years ago, America was not uh, very much in the lead at all. But because of the advent of American technology and innovation and the invention of the reusable uh, rocket, America has now zoomed to number one so we're very, very, I mean, we should all take great pride in that. And the number of launches are increasing every year. So we've had about 32, 34 this year, and next year there's gonna be about 44, 45. And as, they, as these uh, commercial space vehicles go into space and they become more frequent, uh, we at the FAA, at the US Department of Transportation, have to think about how do we integrate and facilitate these launches? So one example, it, it, it's still that if we, if a, a launch goes up, a certain perimeter of airspace has to be emptied. So this is very disruptive. And if indeed there's gonna be more frequent launches, what does that mean for operation of the national airspace? So that's a big question. And second, uh, second of all, we're also um, licensing um, space ports. So there are over a dozen space ports now throughout the country and more, and more states are interested. And then thirdly, uh, the FAA is actually in the business, uh, in, the, uh, in the responsibility is a better word, of um, licensing these launches. And as they, again, become more uh, frequent, uh, now how can we facilitate uh, these launches, not make the government such a barrier, but still protect you know, safety and security of these launches? So these are pretty, some pretty weighty questions, but I think they speak to the uh, tremendous potential of transportation technology and the benefits that they can bring to our world, to our society, and of course uh, to our country as well. Do you think we'll see one this year, some commercial space flight? Oh, definitely. Uh, as I mentioned, we'll probably have about 40 to 45. Mm, right, oh, I mean uh, with, with humans on board. I think that's a little bit too yeah, early yeah. because uh, I mean, that's you're kind of asking, but I'm I'm going to give you a serious answer. Yeah. Anything that involves a human being exponentially complicates the licensing and the permitting process, and rightly so. You know, it's a human life, right. and so we have a heightened responsibility to ensure safety. So our mantra at the Department of Transportation on um, all of these emerging new transportation technologies can be very simply summarized in one sentence. And that is, we are preparing, the US Department of Transportation is preparing for the transportation system of the future 
by engaging with emerging new technologies to address legitimate public concerns about safety, security, and privacy without hampering innovation. You know, that brings us to drones, naturally, yes. because that sentence definitely speaks to drones Absolutely. and what people think about it. And it's another business that's exploding and a lot of work for you guys to do to make sure it's safe, but also to allow that innovation. Where do we stand with drones, Secretary Chow? Well, I just came out of a panel at the World Economic Forum about um, you know how do we handle drones. There are now 1.5 million drones in our country. We have over 150,000 professional drone operators. I was the Secretary of Labor. When I was in sec uh, at Labor, when I was the Secretary yeah. of Labor, yeah. um, this job category did not even exist. Right. So now drones are getting bigger, heavier, they have more capacity to carry either freight or potentially human beings. So we're talking about air taxis, and you know we're talking about uh, all sorts of humans in flight in drones. So our responsibility at the U.S. Department of Transportation is to ensure that the FAA, the agency that's in charge of the drones, uh, again, are viewing safety as a number one priority. We're ensuring security of these drones because obviously they need to be safe from a security point, cybersecurity point of view. Thirdly, um, they need to be, they need to respect privacy. We get a lot of complaints about people who don't want to see drones outside their win second floor window, let's say, or third floor window. And then lastly, as drones proliferate, the issue of noise enters into it as well. So the FAA has a responsibility to address noise issues with drones. And how do we license drones? Do we treat them like airplanes? And how do we track them? So for example, we heard recently that there were these coveys of drones flying at night. Right, in over the Midwest? The, in Nebraska, Nebraska right. in Colorado. We don't, know who they, we don't know who they belong to. We don't know who's operating them. To this day, we do not. Really? And Are so, you investigating still? Uh, the, the, law the local mm -hmm. law enforcement yeah. initiates the action. Mm -hmm. We're very lucky nothing happened, so the local law enforcement have, ste have um, stepped down so we're, no, we're, no, we're not actively uh, investigating that uh, because the local law enforcement stood down. Right. But this talks to a very pertinent notice of proposed rulemaking, which we just announced. And we're sending it out for public comment. And it, uh, the public comment will end on March 2nd. So please comment. I urge people to do so. But this new notice of proposed rulemaking would require remote identification of drones. So any drone that is over 0.55 of a pound, half a pound, and that is registered with the FAA needs to be able to have remote identification capacity. And again, there could not have been a more timely uh, example as to why we are thinking about this than the covey of, again, drones over the skies of Nebraska and Colorado. And law enforcement in particular. Right. Law enforcement and the military are very concerned about remote identification of uh, drones. Yeah, a lot for you to work on there. Um, and finally, Secretary Chow, we're here in Davos at the World Economic Forum, as you said. Um, what do you feel like you got out of it and what did you try to impart to the people here? Well, number one, I'm always a person who loves to learn. And if you're that kind of a person, you would learn so much. Uh, by being at the World Economic Forum because uh, there is such a diversity of experts in practically every subject area that you would want to know. From my point of view, I've just outlined some issues that we are facing with new emerging technologies in the transportation sector. So we want to share our thinking as to what the proper role of government is and what we are thinking in terms of regulating some of those new technologies, and we look for feedback. This feedback will also occur in a more formalized environment, but we're always looking to make sure that the government is doing the right thing. And our posture at this point is, number one, we're tech neutral. 
We are not into industrial policy in this country. We're not into command and control. And we're not top down. We want the consumer, the, pri you know, the consumer to decide how best they want to use these new technologies. So last point, I've talked to a lot of um, innovators on uh, self-driving cars, for example, autonomous vehicles. And I say to them that they need, I challenge Silicon Valley, I challenge the auto manufacturers, I challenge them to share their enthusiasm, their confidence, and their excitement about this new technology because it does have certain benefits. It liberates people with disabilities who can now regain their mobility. It helps to restore freedom to people, to the elderly, so that they can be independent. And 94% of accidents occur because of human error. So we need to get that percentage down. And perhaps the new technologies, autonomous vehicles, can bring safer, um, driving and mobility as well. But 71% of Americans are very reluctant to get into a self-driving car. And so I challenge Silicon Valley and also the auto manufacturers. And I say, share your confidence because consumer acceptance will be the constraints to your growth. All right, very interesting. Transportation Secretary Elaine Chow, thank you so much for your time. Thank you.